I'm loud when I speak, but I'm not the loudest. I say intelligent things, but I'm not the brightest person out there. Even after years of competing in science fairs, there are times when I still feel a little bit nervous when I present. And yet, people listen to me. When I present, people listen to me. Why? There is no singular answer to what makes someone an effective public speaker. Everyone has a plethora of strengths and weaknesses that make them good at what they do. But after years of competing in science fairs and effectively making a career based off of public speaking, I think I can boil down what all good public speakers do to a couple key points. If you listen to what I have to say in this video and you apply these public speaking concepts into your everyday life, into the speeches and presentations that you give, I strongly believe you can power level your skills as a public speaker, taking all the work that you do, all your capabilities as a communicator to the next level. Our first lesson in public speaking is something that nobody discusses enough in this field, and it's the energy and presence that you have in a room when you talk. If you're not interested in what you have to say, nobody else will be. How can you expect them to be? If you go up there and you talk in a murmured, deadpan voice about some topic that you're not engaged in, nobody will listen to you, I guarantee that. Instead, you can try an approach that I've been applying for years, and it's honestly, it's been one of the most successful tips I've ever implemented. Come into every presentation that you give with energy. I don't care if you have to present on the most boring topic that nobody wanted to hear about in school, you will come into it with positivity. You will start your speech out with something like, What's good with y'all? My name is Pratik. I hope you're having a phenomenal day today. I'm here to talk about the human genome project and I want to be discussing the most random pancreas gene that literally nobody cares about. That's how you're going to start. You're going to start with that level of energy because even if it's like something that's kind of goofy and nobody cares about, as soon as you come in with a, a level of loudness, right? You come in excited about it, everyone's attention just snaps to you. In their brain, subconsciously, they're wondering, he's so excited. Why? Why is he excited? What does he have to talk about? And then if you were to follow that up with an actually good quality speech, you're able to build their level of uh, awareness and perception of you to where when you go up and you are excited about something, it's actually followed up by something that's somewhat interesting to them, then people will over time begin to listen to you more and more. It's like building blocks with Legos here. Now in order to be enthusiastic about something, it's one thing to just say on paper, oh, be enthusiastic and energetic, have all the right words that would make someone interested in you. But from a, a speech standpoint, public speaking, we have to talk about like your actual oration, oratory abilities here. What do you do with your voice? Well. First thing is you have to be louder, right? You have to learn to practice speaking loudly and projecting your voice. And so the most important things here are one, being able to get your voice out there with clarity, right? So you wanna be able to pronounce each word well, but you also need to talk in a way that other people are able to hear you. Now this happens more specifically with guys, but if you have like a lower pitched voice, right? Let's say you're talking like a little bit like lower and you tend to have like a little bit more bass in your voice, it can be very, very very easily get kind of contorted, like your words kind of slur together. And so what I'm trying to tell you here is like, I know it's sick to go up there with like a nice deep voice and present what you have to say, but if you're able to improve the clarity of what you have to say by increasing the pitch of your voice a little bit more, right? You, you calm down the bass and you really bring out the, the notes that you need to in order to speak better, it's always in your favor, especially if you're at like some competition or something, you're at like an interview, I know that there's like a level of respect that you get when you have a deep voice, but if you're able to learn to just project your voice better, that's wonderful. And then on the same same time for like my female audience here, a lot of times it's easier when you have like a high pitched like voice to like have a slightly softer voice. Like don't listen to any of the stereotypes out there that say that like as a female you need to be like more quiet or whatever. I know that we're past that, but like there's just too many girls I see presenting with a voice that's not loud enough. Be loud. Like being loud is perfectly okay and just practice it. Like at first it might feel awkward for all, everyone in my audience to just be loud if you're someone who's used to just speaking more quietly. But the thing is, you can practice this in your everyday life by like, if you're having a conversation with someone, let's say like you're in 
class and there's other people around, don't just talk to this person like you're just talking to them. If you want to actually sound confident, speak to the person like you want the other people who are around you to listen in on your conversation. Like you want them to know what's up and that you're having a pop in conversation here. If you start practicing that, then when you go up to present your speeches in the future, you will project your voice past the classroom. Everyone is going to just be there listening to you because you're talking loud. Everyone can hear exactly what you're saying and they're gripped by it. There's another vocal concept in here called down talk. It's basically where when you finish a sentence, you end on a low note. You end the sentence like this. And it's as opposed to ending the sentence like this. And so when you're trying to command or respect, people say to try to use more down talk as you speak. Like it's just a more effective way of, of talking to where people are able to be like interested in you. I have mixed feelings about that. I feel that if you're trying to be effective with someone in conversation, down talk is definitely something to practice. It's very good. It gets people like, it, it feels like it's to the point and people are able to respect what you have to say more. But when you're giving a speech, it's okay to fluctuate between like higher pitched and a little bit lower pitched. Like don't feel bogged down by having to say every Thing in the most like beautiful voice ever. One of the most common problem areas in public speaking is anxiety. When it comes to public speaking, people are scared. It's one of the biggest fears out there, talking in front of people. And I'm sure this has like genetic roots back in caveman days, right? When you're talking in front of a large group of people, you don't want to get judged. You don't want to say the wrong thing. But the thing is, you have to overcome your fear of public speaking. Like in this modern day and age, there's literally like no feasible way to truly become like extremely successful in any field, to have a lasting impact. If you're too scared to voice your opinions, even amongst a small group of people. But don't be alarmed, right? My whole point of this video is to be able to put you on. So even if you have some fears in public speaking, let's try doing a couple things in order to alleviate those. Confidence in itself is just a very abstract concept. It's not really bound by anything. And so when people talk about confidence in regards to public speaking, I often look at it as you've just simply lost the fear or the care of what other people think of you as you talk. As soon as you're able to dispel the thoughts that like you genuinely could care less about what these other people's perception of you is, that's when the fear of public speaking pretty much goes away in its entirety. Now, Pratik, what if you're in an interview or you're in like a science fair type experience where like these things do matter? Even if it's a class presentation, if it's for a grade, there is that little bit of pressure here. So what do you do about that? Well, when it comes to confidence, confidence is just like a skill that you would level up in a video game. The more you expose yourself to the stimulus, the better at it you get. And I know that you just hate exactly what I said because I told you that in order to get good at public speaking, you have to do more of it. But that's exactly what it is. If you put yourself in situations where you're very, very nervous, let's say you have to do what I have to do oftentimes in my science fair, which is like defend and answer questions against like a board of people who know the research work that I'm doing very, very well. That could be like nervous to some people. What if they ask something that you don't know? Well, when you get very, very nervous in that situation and you go through it and you come out successful, you come out unscathed and you realize that like it wasn't really as bad as you made it seem to be in your mind, then think about the next time you have to present in front of like three or four of your classmates and they're asking you questions about your research. Do you think you'd really be as scared in front of them as you were in front of these people? Of course not. Of course not. Because that level of pressure is not there. You expose yourself to the harder stimulus and therefore you're rewarded for it by not feeling nervous around these other people. Even if you went back to the next round of reviewers, you wouldn't feel as nervous because you've already seen yourself be successful. You have to level up your confidence like it's a skill in a video game. Go out there, find opportunities to speak and get your experience. Even if it starts with something just as small as raising your hand in class, everything is a step forward and everything helps. But I want to dig deeper into this because oftentimes people will take their videos, they'll talk about everything that I've said so far, and then they'll just end it there. But what happens is that as an audience member, you listen to all this, you get gassed up, you're all excited, you're feeling confident about it, and then you go out there, and then the opportunity to raise your hand in class comes up, and you just don't do it. Like you get scared and you don't do it. So here we need to build in a couple tricks that'll actually give you confidence like in the moment. It'll get you to where if you're going to present, you're in a situation where you're not just going to like kind of wimp out of it. You're actually gonna challenge it like the person that you are and go and get that experience, get that success. You've probably heard of the phrase fake it till you make it like at least a million times by now. So 
it's absolutely true. You do want to just try to fake your confidence until you have it. But here's an actual better way to approach this. When you have those moments that come up, you're a, you know, the opportunity to raise your hand or present or whatever, hype yourself up. Like literally in your mind, like tell yourself like, I'm that guy, I'm that girl, I'm a him. I'm a himmy neutron, himothy, right? How are you gonna let a group of 17 year olds like define your perception and your abilities? It doesn't make any sense. You need to gas yourself up to the point where you're literally walking up to present like, yeah, none of these people could present better than me. I can absolutely get 100 on this. I'm going to win this science fair. There's no shot anyone's presenting better than me. When you just tell yourself that, you reinforce that message into your mind, regardless of whether you actually feel like it's true or not, you literally tell yourself that, bro, you going up there with a different level of confidence. You're speaking, you're saying things, you don't care if anyone's judging you, you're just going out there and you're doing it. And by the time it's all over, right? By the time that you're, you know, your ego calms down a little bit, you return to reality by the end of your presentation, it's done. You've already gone out there, you've been confident, you've seen the rewards of it, you got your experience, and now you're just walking away with a W. It's that, like, just hype yourself up and go in and do it. I don't care if you think it's cringe or whatever, but you just do it, bro. Like, don't even think things are cringe anymore. Like, people thinking things are cringe is like it's such a young person concept like you realize life gets so much better when you just open yourself up to doing these new things regardless of whether you think that they're a little cringy or not so what i want you to do is i want you to go ahead and just straight gas yourself up the next time you have to present it can be in your mind it can be in the mirror before you get on like a meeting or whatever and i'm telling you it will it treat you differently. Like your confidence will just be straight different when you present and people will notice. Now, the last thing that we need to touch upon while we finish this concept of keeping your nerves in check as you present is practicing. If you practice a speech before you give it, you will be more confident. And the better that you know the material, the more confident you can go out there being. Because now the nervousness is not only about like, oh, am I gonna like be able to speak the material well? Do I actually know what I'm talking about? All of that is gone when you actually practice the material. You know what you have to say, and you know that you've done it before at home. You've done it in front of your parents or with your friends. This is not hard. So now all you need to do is conquer like your fear of being judged by other people, but we just solved that problem in the last step. You're just gonna gas yourself up. And so now the nervousness is completely gone. However, with that being said, there are circumstances where you don't practice. When you practicing actually makes it worse. If you're raising your hand to answer something like a question in class, you do not practice before you do it. What you do is before you even have an answer ready, you just raise your hand. And then that way when they call on you, you're on the spot and you answer the question. The problem is when you practice like your lines, like at something as simple as just like raising your hand and answering a question before you do it, you get into your head. You like make out the situation to be more than it is and you just get nervous. Like you'll just kind of get scared in the moment and then what'll happen is someone else will raise their hand before you, the teacher will call on them, you end up, you, like, you won't practice. And it's just a generally a bad habit to get into. This will also be very, very useful to you, this skill of not practicing and just doing it when you wanna go out there and have like friends, right? Like have good social skills. If you want to be able to go up and approach people, have good interactions, not like always be awkward all the time, because that's part of public speaking is generally having good charisma, then you need to be okay with doing things on the spot. And the more you practice it in an environment where it literally doesn't matter, like in class when you're answering a question, you but you could raise your hand and answer a question completely wrong and nobody cares. Like, like legitimately nobody cares. You just have to understand that you're not as important as you seem. Like you will raise your hand get a question wrong and people will like are like in a daze they're all zombies in the high school classroom like oh yeah like oh he's he's wrong and they'll just look to the teacher they'll get the right answer and they'll just keep moving like go out there and just be wrong a couple times and that way when you go up and talk to people when you face like social rejections and stuff like that like it, it will not matter you won't be scared all the time you'll be putting yourself out there if shooters go shoot and you gonna hit some, you gonna miss some. That's just how this goes. But if you don't shoot any, bro, you not getting any. Let's transition this over to a different concept. When you speak, we talked about the clarity, right? But you also need to slow down when you're speaking. It is very, very rare that you run into public speakers who talk too slow. 
Now, I'm making a YouTube video here. I understand that I have to keep my audience's retention. I have to have high energy. I have to speak relatively fast to get to my point. But when you're giving a structured presentation that's 10 minutes long, when you zoom through the content, and usually you talk a little bit faster when you're nervous as you present. And so if you're able to mindfully slow down your speech, right, and be able to stop slurring your words, have a good amount of precision in the, the way that you enunciate different phrases, that added clarity goes such a long way. If people aren't fully able to understand what you're saying, they don't want to have to work extra in order to just grasp what you're saying. They'll straight just tune out. Teachers will give you less points if they're not able to follow along. You just want to be able to generally slow down and you can see how that'll overall time like improve your public speaking abilities. In terms of body language, hand gestures are also key. I use hand gestures a lot in my YouTube videos. You don't need to use hand gestures like this crazy as you're speaking, but you do need some some kind of movement. Now, don't be that weirdo that like walks around in a classroom when they present, okay? That, that's straight weird. Like there's a time and a place for when you like walk around on stage and you practice that pacing. I'm saying you don't have to worry about any of that, okay? I used to know someone that would do that in our school and it, it was just goofy. Like it was straight corny when they'd present. But instead, just be more accustomed to looking around the classroom, right? Finding eye contact with different people as you speak, right? Move your head to one side, to another side. Use your arms to gesture out the things that you do. When you have a little bit extra stimulus, when you have both a visual stimulus, right? You're probably presenting something and you're moving around, plus the audible stimulus because you're talking and you're doing it in an engaging manner, that way people actually will give you their attention. It's not like they can just be doing homework and like listen into you, but rather they're, they're paying attention to you, they're watching you because you're giving them that feedback. It's something that's entertaining to them. One thing that can really kill like the quality of, of any speech or presentation out there is if you have some crazy nervous tics. So some people have a tendency to use um a lot when they're talking. Other people try to use like or some other phrase that's in there simply when they get nervous because it's part of their vocabulary. Other people or other forms of tics include people who like shake their legs, they do like weird gestures with their arms or whatever, or maybe they're like constantly glancing at their, their watch or looking towards the door or something, simply out of nervousness. It's not even something that consciously happens. Generally, just it happens without paying attention. You want to do your best to conquer those fears. And so how do you do that? Well, when you give presentations, because these things are like unconsciously happening, present in front of your parents and see if they can pick up on anything. Just ask them if they see anything. Or when you present in class, ask one of your friends if like you had any of these nervous tics or before you go to present, let them know to just check for these things. And that way, if you're able to like vet yourself or just generally be more mindful of it by maybe like meditating for a couple minutes before you present, that completely alleviates one of the things that can truly hinder your speech's ability. Because the worst thing that you wanna do is give like a beautiful, eloquent speech, but then realize that every four seconds you were using the word like without realizing it. That just completely kills the mood for everyone. The very last thing to talk about in this video is uh, your strengths and your weaknesses. You need to learn to play off of these. As you get more in depth into public speaking, you you'll find what you're good at, what you're very naturally good at, and a couple things that you need to work on. So do the best to maximize both of those. I know that for me as a public speaker, my strengths include uh, my energy, right, the loudness of my voice, and so I make sure to keep the energy nice and high. I'm able to grip the audience's attention, and I also know that I'm a great speech writer. So I take the time to really like choreograph my speech down to like if I'm gonna have some jokes in there, or if this is a very formal presentation, exactly what I want to say, when I want to say, and I really practice that in. That's what I'm good at. For my weaknesses, I can tend to speak a little bit fast, right? I have a lot of high energy and I'm used to talking fast for just getting my ideas across in general. So I've learned over time to mindfully slow down, right? Have an increased level of clarity. For people that speak faster like me, it's very easy to slur your words together. If you have a lower pitched voice, it's easy to slur your words together. Making sure that you're able to speak up while also speaking efficiently without slurring the words together, having that coherence goes an incredibly long way. So learn your strengths, learn your weaknesses, and do what you can to practice them.
Over time, this will make you one of the greatest public speakers out there. Like the thing is, the bar is so low that if you go ahead and you just practice your skills, you can truly be like the best public speaker in your classroom and it's not that hard. And as soon as you get to that level, you'll see how many opportunities these social skills unlock. So the respect that you command, your ability to just flourish in an interview environment, these skills will take you such a long way in life. That's all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. This has been Pratik. Peace.